today's message, we're going to go back to an old message, which I like to go back and recap some things because as the months pass and as time progresses, uh, we can lose focus on that old message. It may be a, it, it may seem like I'm repeating myself, but it's all that's what the Bible is. It's a book of repeating. God is saying, repent, turn to Him, forsake your sins. Deny yourself. We're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. We'll go back over this. Maybe it's going to jar something loose. Maybe God is going to give you new revelation uh, from, from this teaching. The title of it is Be Content. Be Content. Be Content. That's not only talking about being content with your uh, finances. It's, talk, uh, it's talking about being content in your mind, in your thought life, in every single area of your life. The title of the message is Be Content. Let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, and the authority of Jesus Christ's name, Father, we humbly come before you, thanking you this day, Father, for your grace, for your mercies, for your kindness, for your goodness and your healing, above all, for our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for shedding every precious, precious drop of your blood at the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for raising your son Jesus from the dead. For he is the resurrection, he is the life, no man coming to the Father but by him. Father, we thank you for every ounce of water, for every grain of food, for allowing us to breathe, see, talk, hear. Father, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins, Father, and cleansing us of all unrighteousness. Father, I pray that every soul that's here, may we be content with everything that you have given us. Father, you said, he that is faithful over little shall be made ruler over much. May we become thankful, may we become grateful for what, everything that you have given us. Thank you for eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for healing us in our bodies. Thank you for renewing our minds, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for the victory at the cross of Calvary, Father. I pray that this message pierce the ears, the hearts, and the minds of the listeners. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the living God has to say in Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Because once you're content, you're going to be at peace. You're going to be at peace with this world. You're going to be at peace with your husband, with your wife, with your life. Once you put your dependency on God. Jesus, this is Jesus teaching this, by the way. The King of kings, Lord of Lord. He says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do it corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. He says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, he says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I'm going to repeat, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your treasure is with God, that's where your heart is going to be. If your treasure is with fame, fortune, money, education, that's where your heart will be. The greatest commandment. The greatest commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You should love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. See, if God, if, if God is in your heart, that's what it says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if God is your treasure, He's going to be the number one thing in your heart. We got to put God ahead of everything and everybody. Once God 
is, is in your heart, you know, you're going to have peace in your heart. Let's go to verse 22. He says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. In other words, how do you look at everything? You can look at things for being good or evil. There's some good inside of every body and everything. Why? Because God created. God created. A good God created. It, he says, if thy eye be single, thy whole body should be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? The Bible says, let your yea be yea. Let your nay be nay. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. It's just like I hear people say, well, what is the preacher doing with all that money that he getting in the church? Some preachers are using it for good. Some preachers are using it to consume up on themselves. It depends on how you're looking at it. Not all preachers are taking the tithes and offering and buying million dollar mansions. A lot, some preachers are taking the money and using it for God's kingdom. How are you looking at things? Are you looking at it from a good perspective or are you looking at it from an evil perspective? Listen to what Jesus says in verse 24. He says, no man can serve two masters. No man can serve. You cannot serve God and this world. You cannot serve God and yourself. It says, but either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He says, you cannot serve God and man. You cannot serve God and the world. You cannot serve God and riches. You cannot serve God and your education. You, you can get educated. By all means, go get your education, but put God ahead of everything and everybody. At the, when the smoke clears at the end of your life, it's gonna, oh, you're going to say, well, I'm going to put God first now. No, put him, first, put him first now before it's the end of your life because we don't know when the end of our life is going to come anyway. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Let's go up, verse, back up, verse 20, uh, 24. No man can serve two masters. Anything with two heads is a monster. God must be number one. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Jesus said it like this. Jesus said, may a man deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. He said, those who save their life shall lose their life. Those who lose their life for my sake shall save their life. He said, what profit if a man to gain the whole world lose his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Let's go to verse 25. Jesus says, therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. That means don't even worry about it. See, worry creates anxiety. Anxiety creates hypertension. Hypertension creates high blood pressure. Don't worry about it. He says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Take no thought. That means do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry about your life. Listen to what he says. He says, what you should eat, or what ye shall put, what ye shall drink, or what ye uh, uh, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than me, and the body more than rain? In other words, what's, 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 see, most people are putting materialism ahead of God. So what you don't have the expensive suit? So what you don't have the fancy car? So what? Even once you get those things, that don't change the person that you are on the inside. If you got a thousand dollar suit, have your insides change. You know, change starts inwardly and works its way outwardly. You can take a bum off the corner and put him in a thousand dollar suit. He's still a bum. 
be still the bug. He's going to go back in the ditch and roll around in the mud or whatever he does, and he's still going to be a bug. Change to us inwardly, outwardly. Let's go to uh, verse 26. He says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. He said, Are ye not much better than they? In other words, you are a child of God. We are children of God. We're made in His image and in His likeness. We're His offspring. God is going to take care of His children. Once you start to worship God, once you start to be obedient to God, God is going to take care of you because you are His offspring. The Bible says, I've been young. I've been old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Let's go to verse 27. He says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? Verse 28. And why take thought? Why worry about it? That's what he's saying. Why worry for rain, for clothing? He said, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even, verse 29, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He says in verse 30, he says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? And Jesus goes on, O ye, a little thing, because a lot of people are worried about, oh, I, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? Uh, uh, how are we going to get the bills paid? Why are you worried about it? You driving yourself crazy. You take care of, uh, you do all you need to do. You go to work, you manage your money, you be a good steward, start exercising good stewardship over your finances. Praise God, worship God, light up in obedience. I guarantee you God is going to bless you. You gotta have good. The reason why a lot of people are in financial situations is because of poor stewardship, mismanagement of money. Now, certain situations happen that people cannot control that they get in debt, but for the most part, I guarantee you, most people are in debt because of poor stewardship over what God has empowered you with. Let's go back to verse 30. For us, uh, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Jesus says this repeatedly. Therefore, take no thought. That means do not worry about it. Saying, what we shall eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Listen to verse 33. This is a scripture that changed my life. And I apply this to my life each and every day. He says, but see, this is what you should do first. He says, but this is, what, this is what's going to allow you to feel the, uh, 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 have the blessings of Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob over your life. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Notice Seeking God is connected to righteousness. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm going to repeat. He says, uh, Matthew 6, 33, he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How do you do that? You wake up each and every day. When I open my eyes, I say, thank you, Jesus. I say, forgive me, Lord. I, I pray each and every day. I read my Bible each and every day. Seeking God is a lifetime commitment. Seeking God is a lifetime mandate. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm going to repeat that. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's go to verse 34. He says, therefore, take, he says, take therefore no thought. He says this repeatedly. Take no thought. Take no thought. Take no thought. That means don't worry about this. Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't worry.
worry about people that criticize. You don't worry about people that talk about you. Don't worry about your finances. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. I hear people talking about, oh, the end of the world is coming. Only people that's worried about the end of the world is the people that are not right with God. I don't worry about the end of the world. If it ends now, I'm going to heaven. That's the way I look at the end of the world. He says, therefore, take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto today is the evil girl. Let's deal with our current problems that we're dealing with today. Don't even worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. I'm not telling you just stop and give up on life and stop taking care of your business. I want your mind to stop worrying about bad things that's going to happen to me. Oh, this is going on in my life. God will never get me out of this situation. You got to be patient. You got to continue. You got to have some consistent commitment to the faith. See, seeking God is a lifetime commitment. Some people seek God when they get the blessing. They get the house. They get the husband. And they stop seeking God. Seeking God is a lifetime commitment, a lifetime mandate. Prayer is a lifetime commitment. Reading the word of God is a lifetime commitment. Don't stop doing it when it seems like things are going right. Because Satan is just waiting to stick his claws deeply inside of you. He's waiting for you to stop worshiping. He's waiting for you to stop praising. This is a lifetime commitment. Seek ye God. I'm going to go back over verse uh, 33. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, take therefore no thought for the mark, for the mark shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's go to uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Hallelujah. Be content. If you would, if you born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. Let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse. Uh, Matter of fact, let's start at verse 24. Verse 24. Verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. See, you got to deny selfism. You got to deny self-ambition, self-righteousness. Once you give up your life, for Christ Jesus, you have just found your life. Once you give up, once you give up your life for the Lord, you have just found your life. He said, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And follow me. He says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it, shall find it. See, it's, it's, see we, we got to draw a line in the sand each and every day and choose whom we're going to serve. Are we going to serve light or darkness, unrighteousness, uh, uh, unrighteousness or righteousness? Are we going to serve God or Satan? You make that decision each and every day. People get mad at Adam and say, Adam, why did you do it? But you're still making that decision each and every day to eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, of the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ. We're still making that same choice each and every day, and Satan is still deceiving men and women each and every day. Let's go to verse 26. Jesus says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Okay, you got your education. You got your husband. You got your wife, you got, you got your boat, you got your RV, you raise your children. What next? There's always going to be a what next until you find the Lord. You know, he says, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? All the rubies, all the diamonds, all the pearls, all the 
The most precious thing you possess is your soul. And only God can save that soul. Only God can preserve that soul. He says, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, with his holy, with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. See, a lot of people say, well, once you're born again, you got salvation, that's all it takes. But now, it's come, now it comes time to produce works, good works, and produce good fruits for the kingdom of God. Because once you're born again filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to go and tell people about Jesus Christ. You're going to witness for Jesus Christ. You're going to produce good fruits, and you're going to produce good work. Jesus says in verse 28, Verily I say unto you, there be some here, uh, uh, some, there be some standing here which shall not taste death. Till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Be content. Be content. If you got a box of crackers in your pantry, a loaf of bread in your pantry, and you're alive and you're breathing and you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, rejoice. And thank God. God will increase you with more. God will increase you with more. Because situations and circumstances could be far worse than what they are. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse uh, 17. And no, by no means am I beating up on rich people. But I'm preaching that you don't allow your possessions to possess you. You worship the creator, not the creative. Because a lot of rich people have more faith in their riches than they have in God. It's a false hope. It's a false sense of security. Whatever God has you at, use it to glorify the kingdom of God. Whether you're rich, poor, middle class, use it to glorify God's kingdom. Let's go to verse 17. And this is Jesus preaching this. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, he is the prophet. He is the priest. He is the king. His words are the only word that really count, words that really count. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master. What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's the question. That's what everybody's trying to figure out. How can I inherit uh, eternal life? And Jesus, verse 18. Matthew uh, 10, verse 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not defraud. No, do, not, do not kill. Uh, well, let's go back over there. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. Verse 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go that way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross, the cross, and follow me, and follow me. But listen, listen to what the young rich ruler did. And see, people are not rich, but they, they're not going to give up the love that they have and follow Christ. They're still concerned about the issues in this life. That's not going to get them into the kingdom. They're still worried about this and worried about that. Let's go to verse 22. And he was sad. The young rich ruler was sad at the same. And went away grieved, but he had great possessions. Great possessions. He allowed his possessions to possess him. He worshiped the creative rather than the creator. And Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hard shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Because they're putting those possessions ahead of God. They're allowing those things to consume them, worldliness to consume them, riches to consume them. And the disciples, verse 24, and the disciples was astonished at his words. But Jesus 
answering again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looking up on them said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. Verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left half or brother, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake, and the gospel. Listen to verse 30. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mother, and children, and lands, and persecution. And in the world to come eternal life. So, if you've left this stuff, God is going to bless you back with it. If you've left it for his sake, for his name. We don't leave it just to say, oh, God's going to bless me with it. you got to leave it and follow Jesus. Take up the cross and follow the Lord. See, my calling is not to be a businessman. My calling is to preach the gospel. No matter how many people show up, i got to preach the gospel. No matter what he says, i got to preach the gospel. God will make a way. But many that are first shall be last. And the last shall be first. There's nothing on this earth more important than your relationship with God. See, Jesus said it like this. He said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It shall set you free. Because one day the light bulb is going to pop on in your head and in your mind. Okay. I thought Pastor Wade was crazy. I thought the preacher was crazy. But now I understand the truth. See, this world will blind you from the truth. Money will blind you from the truth. This world system will blind you from the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He said, no man comes to the Father but by me. Let's go to uh, Luke. Chapter, let's go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Amen. Be content. Be content. Whatever God has you at, be content. Be content. If you're content, it's going to bring peace in your heart. Contentment brings joy in your heart. All the people that are, uh, that are not content are the ones that are still seeking things in this world. Nothing in this world is going to bring in a peace. God, when I first started preaching, God said, Preacher, you will never have peace in your heart until you make peace with your God. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. Let's go, we're going to start at verse 13. At verse 13. It's a parable of the rich fool. That's what it's called. And this is Jesus teaching. The Lord himself had to leave heaven, come down to earth, and give us the message. Because when we get before God on the day of judgment day, you're going to say, oh, I didn't know. God's going to say, hey, I gave it to you in the word. I left my throne to come down in the form of a man to give you the truth. I allowed myself to be sacrificed on the cross to give you the truth. There's no excuses. No, for us living the type of lifestyle we live if we're getting the truth. But you got to follow the truth. you got to believe the truth. you got to receive the truth. See, the truth, like we're talking in that message about truth, truth is not what Pastor Wayne says it is. Truth is not what we think it is. Truth is what the Word of God declares it is. My opinion does not count. This is why I read it from the Word of God. Let's go to verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, said unto Jesus, Master, speak to my brother, brother, 
that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed. Listen at this. Because Jesus, he said, Take heed and beware. Take heed and beware. Take heed and beware of covetousness. What is covetousness? You can look it up in the Greek. You can look it up in the Hebrew. You can look it up in Latin. You can look it up in Spanish, English. It means the same thing. Adamantly seeking riches. It does not just mean wanting other people's uh, husbands or wives or houses. It means that people that are adamantly seeking wealth and riches. America teaches you just hit the lottery. Everything is going to be okay. Most of the people that hit the lottery read those stories after they hit the lottery. They wish they never would have hit the lottery. They wish they could go back to a normal life, a normal life. I'm going to read this again. I'm telling you that uh, whatever God gives you, use it for the kingdom. Don't let that stuff get you. I'm not saying that if you're rich that you're going to hell. Oh, I'm rich, I'm going to hell. Wherever God has you at, financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, use everything to glorify God's kingdom and you'll be okay. And he said unto them, take heed. Beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. This came from Jesus' mouth. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. John said, naked I came in, naked I'm going to leave. He's, the Lord says, from dust you came, and dust you shall return. When I die, they're going to pluck these rings off my finger. If I got gold, which I don't have any gold teeth in my mouth, they're going to pluck the gold teeth out of my mouth. You know, before they get you six feet in the ground, they're going to pluck all the jewelry off you. Your family members may think they buried you with your wedding ring on and all the gold. Somebody's going to pluck all that out your mouth. You're going to take the earrings, those diamond earrings, out of your ear because you can't take that stuff. Which, that's why Jesus says, take no thought. He says, your life does not consist of the abundance of things which you possess. Which you possess. Don't worry about your car. Don't worry about the house. Just seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do God's will. Those things are not going to make you happy. Anyway, listen to verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them. What is a parable? It's a spiritual, short, moral story. And Jesus was the master. A speaking parables because he is the master. Listen at this. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. I mean, the guy was doing well in his business. He, his company was booming. Every, his money was flowing. And he thought within himself, verse 17, said, what shall I do? Because I have no more room where to bestow my uh, fruits. In other words, I got so much money, I don't have no room to put it. What should I do? And he said, this I do. I will pull down my bones and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. In other words, I got so much money, I'm going to have to open up more bank accounts. You know, that's basically what he said. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods. Lay it up for many years. Take thy ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. In other words, you're going to die tonight. You're going to have to answer to me tonight. He says, and I said at the, the, the verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be? which thou hast provided. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and not rich towards God. The whole world is saying that once you get your education, you make X amount of dollars, everything is going to be okay. Until you find the Lord Jesus Christ, until you make your peace with God, until you know God is being the Lord of your life, you're never going to find peace. You only can get peace. There's a vacancy on that side of every one of us that only the Holy Spirit can fill.
fill that vacancy because we're spiritual beings. God is a spirit. And Jesus said those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And only the Holy Spirit can fill that vacancy on the inside of you. We got to get plugged back into God. Plugged back into the grid. Only God is going to make, make you happy. Only God is going to bring. The Bible says in his presence is the fullness of peace. In his presence is the fullness of love. In his presence is the fullness of joy. And God intended it to be that way. Once you get disconnected from him, you get disconnected from the power source. You get disconnected from love. If God is the source of all blessings, why isn't too many people seeking God? Why are they seeking that money? And why are people saying, hey, I'm blessed because I got $10 million. Just because you got $10 million does not mean that you're blessed. Because most of those people that got $10 million, they don't even know God. We got the blessings confused. The word blessed means that you're happy. The word blessed means that you're complete. The word blessed means that you're with God. Because he's the source of our blessings. Let's go to verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Do not worry for your life what you should eat, neither for the body what you should put on. The life is more than meat, and the body more than rain, which is clothing. He says, consider the rains, for they neither sow, sow nor, nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor born. And God feeds them. How much more are ye better than the fires? And which of you, with taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? No matter how much I take thought, I'm not going to get any taller. You know? No matter how much I take thought, my reputation is not going to change. You know? It says in verse 26, If ye then be not able to do that which is least, why take thought? For the rest, it's just like my son. I can't worry about my son. All I can do is give him the word of God. All I can do is teach him the right things to do. It's going to be up to him to make the decisions for his life, how he's going to live his life. I'm not going to go crazy like, oh, my son, oh, oh once he leaves the house, I can't. Matter of fact, I can't wait till he leaves the house. <laughs> Sorry about that, son. He says, consider it. The lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, up the, the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, ye of little faith? We got to have faith in God. This is why suicides are on the rise. Depression is on the rise. Anxiety. People are road rage. People are killing each other by somebody cutting them off in traffic. If you step on somebody's foot, you might get killed. Because people are not at peace because they have not made their peace with God. The scripture says a nation that turns from God shall be turned into hell. That's what you're seeing in America right now. A nation that turns from God shall be turned into and hell, God will allow the devil just to run through this whole country. If you've, you've removed the Ten Commandments, you've removed prayer out of school, and everybody's still saying, God, bless America. No, God is not going to bless America if you've removed God from America. He says, oh ye, a little faith. Listen to that verse 29. And seek not ye what you should eat or what you should drink, neither be ye doubtful minded. Doubt. Unbelief is not a friend of faith. God loves people that operate in faith. The scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Have faith in God. The Bible says nothing is impossible for those who believe. He says, For after the, uh, all these things do the nation of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that you have need of these things. God already knows what you need. Before, before, before you even ask him. See, what God is waiting for his people to do is line up in obedience. Line up in obedience to worship him, to honor him. The more you pray, the closer you get to God. Don't let any man deceive you saying, oh, it don't. I hear preachers on TV say, it don't take all that prayer. Yes, it does. 
It takes a lot more. Jesus prayed. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. The more you pray, the more you're fellowshipping with God. The more you pray, the more you're communing with God. The more you pray, the more peace you're going to find with God. The more you pray, the more God is going to direct your path. The more you pray, the more God is going to transform your life. Verse 31, Jesus says, But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that you have and give up. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, and treasures in heaven that felleth not. For, for where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your trip, and I use money as an example because that's the biggest one that's keeping people from God. See, a lot of people say, well, if I follow God, I'm going to lose everything. And I'm going to lose all my fun. Remember this, the flesh is never satisfied, brothers and sisters. I don't care how many massages you get. The Bible says, make no provisions for the flesh. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It says the flesh profited nothing. At the end of the day, only God can bring you that inner peace. Only God can give you that inner peace. Let's go to uh, let's go to First Timothy. First Timothy. First Timothy. I had been in Timothy in a long time. And I have preached this message in a long time. But we got to keep things in the perspective in which God will have us put it in. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Thank you. 
that we should be worried about. Seek the kingdom of God. Build up God's kingdom. That comes automatically, brothers and sisters. We don't even have to mention that. Once you line up with God, God is going to bless you anyway. You shouldn't even have to mention it. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Repeat verse 6. I'm just reading the scripture. This is why I like reading the scripture. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. I'm going to read back on verse 5. Perverse disputing of men, corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Supposing that gain is what? Is godliness. That's talking about monetary gain is godliness. You see it going through every church. Oh, God's going to give me my stuff back. God's going to do this. But listen to what he said. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You don't hear that too often, do For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can't carry nothing out. You don't hear this scripture read too often. Because if we, they read this scripture, it contradicts that doctrine, which I believe is a doctrine of devils, to get you away from godliness with contentment, to get you away from salvation and deliverance, to continue to distract you in this world. Christians ought to look for heavenly things, not earthly things. We're looking above, not beneath. It says, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Listen to this. Having food and rain, let us therewith content. Let us be therewith content. I'm just reading the scripture. Just having food and clothing, God tells you to be content. I thank God for transportation. I thank God for shelter. Because anything, and God tells us this, because anything can happen on this earth, and on any given day, any given time, that all that money that you got in the bank ain't going to do you no good when you're dead. It ain't going to do you no good. Somebody just going to come and snatch it out. Somebody's going to take power of the turn. Over your, over your uh, estate if you don't have a will and they're going to take that money out and somebody else is going to spend it. And all this stuff you've been hoarding up for yourself, somebody else is going to get it. And you gone. Your spirit is either went to heaven or the other direction and hell's fire if you have not accepted Jesus Christ. Listen to that verse 8. And having food and rain, let us that we be content. But they, let's at this. I'm just reading the scripture. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men into destruction and perdition. Mm. And perdition. I'm going to read verse 9 again. Because they say if you hit the lottery, everything's going to be okay. Everything is not going to be okay. If I had to, if, some, if I was to come into a, a large sum of money now, with me being in God the way I am, I would donate it. I would donate it. I would give it away. I would give it away. I would give a majority of that money away. I would sow that money into God's kingdom. With my mind set now. Now when I was in the world, I wouldn't have did that. But they, they will be rich. Listen to this. Fall into temptation and a snare of the devil. That's what they're talking about. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which is desire, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Listen to this. For the love of money is the root of all evil. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. That means it can draw you away from the faith. A lot of people say, well, I love God. Are you worshiping God for what he can give you? Are you worshiping God for who he is? You don't worship God for him making you rich. You worship God because he's God. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through. With many sorrows. With many sorrows. See, here's the deal. I don't care how strong you are in faith. 
If you're not careful, you can be led astray. I don't care if you've been with Jesus Christ 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Satan is going to come and offer a different type of, whatever level you get on, he's going to come and try to tempt you with something. To pull you out of your righteousness. To pull you out of your holiness. To pull, see, if he's still getting you with the same tricks, he's going to keep using the same tricks. His women is still pulling the man out of God's will. Satan is going to keep throwing that at you, throwing that at you. But see, if it doesn't work on you, he's going to try something. New. You know, okay, if, if that's not working, let me allow that income to increase. Let's see if they're going to worship that money or that education or that career or that fame more than they worship God. See, anything that you put in the head of God has become your God. Let's go to verse 11. Listen to what he tells you to follow. Out of all that I just read, people will say, well, money ain't evil. People are evil. I hear so many people twist this scripture. They say, oh, money ain't evil. It's the people that are evil. I hear preachers saying that. But listen to what he tells us to follow. But thou, man of God, flee these things and follow. Listen to what he tells us to follow. Follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and me. I'm going to read that again. He tells us to flee from that lust of money, from the lust of riches, uh, from that lust of seeking those things, the love of money. That should even proceed up out of a Christian's mouth. You cannot put God in the same category that you put money and man in. He says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. <laughs> Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before man. Hallelujah. Many, well, before many witnesses. He says, I give thee charge. In the sight of God, who quickened all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate, witness a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only propent, pro, propentant, uh, the King of kings, uh, and Lord of lords. Who only have the mortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach, unto whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor, power, uh, everlasting. Amen. Amen. Listen to verse 17. He says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded. Because people, notice people that have a lot of money, they think they're on top of the world. I got my BMW, I have my Mercedes, and let's go eat some caviar. You know, because that money brings forth pride. It brings forth arrogance. It brings forth boasting. You think you are part of the elite because you have money. That's, it will lift you up. You're talking to a man that was made a lot of money. That money, lift, it will lift you up. And you talk to a man that was with God that still got allowed money to take me out of my faith because I got lifted up with pride. I know this only. I'm not telling you something that I'm speculating on. I'm telling you something that I have experienced myself. But God had to humble me. He had to knock me down. And I'm glad he did because it snapped me out of the trance in which the enemy had me in. It says, charge them that be rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Listen to that. Uncertain riches. Riches are not certain. Uncertain riches. But in the living God, put your trust in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, in good works, ready to distribute, willing to Communicate. Amen. Laying, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold 
on eternal life. If you are rich, don't feel condemned. <laughs> Do the will of God. Don't allow me. Uh, the message I'm preaching is not to condemn people that are rich. But if you're rich, don't allow that stuff to condemn you. Don't allow that stuff to dictate and control you. Because once it controls me, you say, well, preaching, I ain't going to let it get me like that. Satan is a very crafty creature. He was the most crafty, deceiving creature in the garden. And Satan no, has been around thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ahead of us. He knows what makes man tense. He knows what, what can pull a man up out of his righteousness. He's pulled many men up out of their righteousness before. Don't think you can. The only thing that can us smart the devil is the word of God. If you stay in this word, if you stay in church, if you stay in prayer, you will not get misled by the devil. Let's go to John. First John. We're going to finish here in first John. First John. chapter 2 verse 15 my objective to this message being content is to have you dependent more on God than the world the Bible demonstrates that all from Genesis all the way to Revelation that your dependency must be in God because when man's system fails God's system will never fail God's ways will always keep you lifted up. It said, verse 18, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. I'm going to repeat that. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. I hear a lot of people say, well, I love God, but does your lifestyle reflect that you truly love God? Your whole life should evolve around doing the will of God. You say, well, preacher, that's too much. You're going to be a lot happier, and you're going to find a lot more contentment once you line up with the will of your heavenly Father. Because man is very capable of destroying himself. Man is very capable of destroying himself. I see it every day as a pastor. I see people every day that at the old church that we was in, people would come into the church broken by drugs and alcohol, prostitution, wanting to commit suicide because they allowed the world to consume them. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Once you get out the world, you know what's going to happen? Depression, anxiety, stress. Uh, all those spirits are going to leave off of you because the world tells you you need to do X, Y, and Z to be happy. And the Bible tells you you need to worship God to be happy. And like I said earlier, we're spiritual beings. Those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. we got to get linked back to the power source, which is God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father it's not in him. Listen at this. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What is keeping you from following God all the way? Hmm? I'm going to say it again. What is preventing you from following, committing your whole life to God? See, when you commit to God, you don't have to come in the pool pit and preach. People say, well, that's just for you preaching. That's for every Christian. Even if you're a businessman, you put God first. If you work in a nine to five, you put God first. It's not just for Pastor Wade to dedicate his life to God. That's for every believer. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Listen to verse 16. For all that is in the world are the lust of the flesh. That's the desire of the flesh. You'll never be able to satisfy the desires of the flesh. I don't care how many girlfriends you have, son. You'll never be able to satisfy the desires of the flesh. I don't care how many pieces of pie you eat. I 
because when I get, I go by me, I love lemon pie. Lemon meringue pie. I, I, we eat lemon pie all the time. I go cut one piece of that lemon pie, go lay on the sofa. Like, boy, that pie was good. I know I don't need to eat another piece. I ain't up eating half the pie. I know it don't look like it, you know, by my side, but I may end up eating <laughs> Eating half that pie. My dad, I got an upset stuff. The flesh is never satisfied, brothers and sisters. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. See, we're at war against the world, against the flesh, against the devil. See, your mind is going to constantly war against God's word each and every day. Don't think you crazy because, oh man, no, I'm thinking these crazy thoughts. God, I'm not born. The devil's going to tell you you're not born again and all that nonsense. Your mind is going to war against the word of God for the rest of your life. Your flesh is going to kick and buck against the word of God each and every day. This is why it's very important to develop a prayer line. It's very important to get in the Bible to renew your thought life, your mind, to renew your mind. It says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the desire of the flesh, and the desire of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Listen at this. And the world, verse 17, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. This building is going to pass away. This podium is going to pass away. My body is going to pass away. All this is going to, this, this blazer is going to go back to the dust. Dust you came, dust you're going to return. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You need to find out what is, you say, why am I on this earth? Father, what is, you need to start asking God, what is your purpose and your plan for my life? Why are you allowing me to hear the gospel? What is it that you want me to do? Not everybody's purpose and plan is to, uh, that God has for them is to preach the gospel. He may have a special assignment for you, but as long as you need to ask him, Father, what is your purpose? What is your plan for my life? And see, once you start to fulfill that purpose and that plan, that's when you're going to find peace. That's when you're going to find joy. Once you line up with the will of God, everything else is going to line up in your life. I'm going to repeat that. Once you line up with the will of God and you find out the purpose and the plan that God has for your life, then you're going to be at peace. And, and see, the thing about when you're running with God, all, it, it doesn't mean that everything is just going to stop attacking you. That's what people make a mistake. They say, well, when I come up here to the altar, here, everything is going to be okay. Once I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, it's going to be peaches and cream, and it ain't nothing going to bother me. I'm going to be floating on clouds and living in harmony. It doesn't work that way. The, point, the day that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Satan is going to throw everything at you. But God will still keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is staying focused on Him. I'm going through the greatest trials and tribulations in my life, but God the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is still comforting me, comforting my heart, bringing peace to my mind through all the trials, through all the tribulations, no matter the financial problem that I may be having, no matter if I'm having physical problems in my body, no matter if I'm being persecuted from people, God is still keeping me in perfect peace. Because if you stay in the Word of God, you stand with the Prince of peace. If you stand in the will of God, you walking in peace. If you've been obedient, the key is to be obedient to God. Obey the voice of God. Very important. Remember Saul, King Saul. He disobeyed God and the Holy Spirit left him. Joseph, what, what did, uh, what did uh, David say? He said, Father, make it be a clean heart. Renew in your right spirit. Take not thine Holy Spirit away from it. Because only the Holy Spirit is going to bring you peace if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. See, it's one thing making Jesus your Savior. It's one thing. We're going we're to finish up here. It's 
one thing making Jesus your Savior. It's another thing making Him your Lord. It's one thing, I'm going to repeat that. It's one thing making Jesus your Savior, but have you made Him the Lord over your life? Before you make any decisions, are you, are you consulting with God? Are you asking God, God, what should I go this way? Am I at the right church? Uh, uh, am I making the right decisions in my finances? See, once you become the Lord over your life, God dictates and dominates every area of your life. You don't go certain places. You don't say certain things. You don't watch certain movies because you don't look at certain things online because you got to be careful. You got to guard your eyes. You got to guard your ears. You got to guard your mouth. You got to guard your heart. Because once Jesus is the Lord of your life, He dictates, He dominates, He controls everything that you do. God can lead you and I better than we can lead ourselves. Because Jesus said it like this, the blind cannot lead the blind, they will both fall in the ditch. In other words, the spiritually blind cannot lead the spiritually blind, they will both fall fall in the Do my, my flesh did not feel like coming to preach. I never wanted to preach. Never really desired to preach. But God, once God gives you a call, you must fulfill your call. Once God reveals himself to you, it's not that you want to do it, it's just you have to do it because you know God is real. So, you know, I believe everybody here is saved in this church. The small amount of people that we have here Today. So I'm not going to do an altar call, but if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want, I want you to come up and get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, I've been up. I really don't feel the Spirit. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Like this preacher I was listening to on, 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 online the other day, Bill, not Paul Washington. He says, seek him and seek him hard. See, we'll seek him. We'll say, Heavenly Father, I thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I'm finished. <laughs> I think that's one of your prayers, son. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Good night. <laughs> Let's go to sleep. That's not seeking him hard. Don't seek him like my son. You know, my son won't seek him for a minute. But you got, you got to seek him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You got to seek God like there is no tomorrow. Because there may not tomorrow is not promised. The end of us, Jesus could come back before this day is over, before I finish talking, the Lord will come back and he can, He's going to make all things new. None of this stuff that you, this is why it says take no thought. Because either you can go to Jesus, and I'm not even saying this to scare anybody. Every three seconds, look this up online, every three seconds somebody dies. Every three seconds. Now, how many of those three people? 1,001, three people just died. How many of those three people? 1,002, three more people died. How many of those six people knew the Lord? How many of those three people had a relationship with God? God did not save us for ourselves. He saved us to go out and witness to Him, witness for Him. God spoke to me 1,001, three verses before. He said, a lot of people will never know me the way that you know me. I don't, you did not choose me. The scripture said, he said, I chose you. He has said, he has revealed himself to us to, for, for his purpose, for his plan to go out and witness for the Lord, to bear witness of the truth, to pull other people from the powers of darkness into the powers of light. See, a lot of people are walking in darkness, and they're, and they're walking because Satan has blinded their hearts, he's blinded their minds. And they say, well, it don't take all that. God loves me. I'm going to heaven. But their lifestyle does not reflect that they're born again. Once you're born again, your lifestyle will reflect that you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. The places that you go, the things that you say, you know, of course you're going to, if, if you, the thoughts that you think, you say, well, my thoughts are not lining up holy. Repent. Turn back to God. Ask God to give you the strength to resist those thoughts. Ask Him to cleanse your mind. Ask Him to cleanse your heart. Wherever Satan is attacking you at, ask God to give you strength in your life. And He will come. He will come and show Himself unto you.